Hello and welcome to Disney Android development tutorial. This is part 4 on how to make a video player application for Android. In the previous tutorial we listed the videos and we created the video controller which will be very useful for us in this tutorial. Right now if you want to run the app you can do so and you will find the following. So I'm running the app. As you can see we have this black rectangle at the top and we have the videos we find in our device. So make sure you download a couple of videos. Uh, I've got these videos from pexels.com. They have free videos with no copyright. So I've got these videos from there. And here you will see the videos you have. Uh, you have to put it in one of these folders, either the movies or download or DCM. You can maybe take a video with your camera or something like that. Okay, so this is what we want. But we would kind of change a bit this design because we want it to be the default option of video to be full screen video in order for us to see a larger, uh, to use better the device screen. For that, we will go and switch to our IDE and go to our activity main.xml and we will actually delete this video view right here because we really don't will we really won't use this for now okay so we will delete this for now okay and we will leave only the list view okay so now that we have this we will create a new activity that will be the one that will play the videos for that we go to our package folder right here right click on it and click on new activity and we will say empty activity or something like that empty activity okay and this activity will be called uh, bit player for example bit player okay um great and layout name, we will call it um, video player. Video player, as you can see. So right now, we have a package name is this and source language is Java. Now we can click and finish and the IDE will generate the activity for us. As you can see, we have this and we don't have, we have this in this warning because we have not created yet the xml file if we go to our manifest file right here we have you can find that we have created this new activity which is just one line i will as you can see we have two activities we have the bid activity or the bid player activity and we also have our main activity okay so for that we will be thinking if we need to add some extra parameters. So first of all, the be the player activity will be the one that will get the, the video file and will actually output to the screen, you know? So that's a kind of a very important activity right here. And we want to get it right, of course. Okay, so the video player activity we will set these to have a landscape orientation, you know? So you're gonna say screen orientation and we'll set it to sensor landscape, which will detect when it's a landscape, okay? And we will also add the configuration changes to orientation, so we will know when the orientation changed, okay? Okay, okay, and I think that will be it for now. It has empty body, so to, to silence that warning, we will just press the forward slash here, and that's it. As you can see, we have our video player and our main activity, activity, actually. Okay, now we can uh, go back to our video player activity, which was created right here. And as you can see, we have a warning, as I told you, 
so we have to create the layout of the BVO player. Okay, for that we go and inside the RAS folder, inside the layout folder, we right click on this, we go and click on new layout resource file and inside here we will we will enter the new name of the XML file which is BVO layer okay the root element of these will be linear layout and we will press in OK cannot create a file file already exists so we have created the file already apparently we have oh this was created by by the IDE so we will delete this and we'll do it again so we'll delete this file that was previously created by the IDE we go and say new layout resource file and create our new video player file as you can see and we will change the root element to linear layout we'll click on OK as you can see we have our new video player layout created now this is set, so let me see if I can close the preview. Okay, great. Now I can put this in the new line. And we have this to match part. We also want it to have a gravity center in order for it to look symmetrical. Okay, the background of this will be black. Okay. And the orientation is vertical, which is already set. Okay, inside these we will create our video view. So here is where the video view will be created. So video view, the width will be much parent, the height will be wrap content. Okay. No, the height will be also much parent, so I'm wrong here. Because we want to use the whole the whole space we have. So much parent. Uh, the gravity here will again it's not layout. Oh yeah, layout gravity center. Okay. The ID of these will be video view. And that's basically it. Okay. So now we can close this file because I don't think we will be using it anymore. We open our video view activity and as you can see, it cannot resolve the symbol even though we have created it. So maybe for that we will clean or rebuild the project to go to build and rebuild project so maybe you don't see these maybe some of you will see this error but it will depend so we're rebuilding the project and maybe there then these will be fixed so we wait for it to rebuild the project and it's not working really so let me see what's going on here if I click here maybe there's a typo so video player main layout click on okay it says that it already exists so we will ignore this because this is an android studio error right here so we have to ignore this for now okay so this is the onCreate method and as we will create a couple of global variables right here the first one of that being the video view itself so we're going to say pri private video view we can, uh, so video view, we can call it my video view, as you can see, and we will set this to null. Okay, then we go and define the position of the video, so the current position, so that's it, private in position, and it will be zero as default, of course. Now we're gonna create a progress dialog, which will enable us to tell the user that we are loading the video maybe. Okay, so private progress, uh, progress dialog, which is deprecated, I think. So we may not use in the end this because it's deprecated, but for now we will use it maybe at the beginning. Then we will replace it with something newer. Okay, if we need it anyway, okay. Progress dialog. So I have a typo here. So dialog. Okay. And we'll have to also create our brand new class, which is video controller. So you can say private 
video controller and we will call these media controls oops controls media controls as you can see okay so now we're going to create our media player which will enable us to actually get the actions from media controller which is private media player and player we will set also these to null of course don't forget to import all of these as you can see and now we have created our global variables so after we do this we set the content view we'll go and say check if media controls is equal to null we will initialize the media controls for that we're going to say media controls is set to new uh, video controller and we'll pass the context which is with player dot this as you can see right there okay so that's our media controls now after these we will initialize the video view okay for that we're going to say my video view will be set to find view by id r that id dot video view as you can see and right here we're going to say my video view dot set or yeah set keep screen on because we want to keep the screen on while we're playing the video and we'll set it to true okay great now we are about to create a progress dialog but we may not need this you know so we may not need this progress dialog so so it was deprecated anyway so we'll just delete this okay so that's progress dialog we deleted and we skipped that for now and we will right now open a try block so you can say try we open bracket and here we're gonna say my video view dot set media controller and we'll pass the media controls right here so we're setting our brand new media controller and we'll also we'll get the the um the intent value that was passed by the main activity okay 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 so let me see what can we do here differently so we're gonna say a string um intent info and we will set this to get intent dot get string extra and we say video um activity intent so the same we imported previously so we have to import these so we go here and type import um com dot example dot main activity was that oh video player dot main activity dot oh of course this is static again I'm forgetting this so import static and this will be video activity intent as you can see right here so we go get a string extra um right here and we pass video activity intent as you can see we have some sort of a warning right here so we have to go and change this value to string so it's not an int it's a string so we're gonna change this to string and video activity intent we're gonna say uh, video for example or something like that okay and now we can see that the warning is gone so get string extra as you can see right there and now we're gonna um get if we have to restore some value or not okay 
for that, we're gonna access a shared preference, which is in a way in which we can save stuff or information for later use, even if the app is closed. For that, we're gonna say final shared preferences, and we call it SP, and we're gonna say preference manager, preference manager dot get default shared preferences as you can see so get default shared preferences and you're gonna get application context in this way we access in application wide shared preferences which is great now we will add a button later that will enable us to continue watching a video that we left previously okay even if we close the app as i told you in the previous tutorial so you're going to say if intent info that equals um continue watching for example so our continue watching or something okay continue okay just continue watching okay as you can see right here so if equals continue watching we will get the the video path we were be watching okay we were watching previously. For that, we're gonna say um, intent info, or maybe we want to reset this to sp dot get string, and we have to save it in some way, kind of using a key right here. For example, uh, saved video okay and default value will be of course null okay and we also have to set get the position of the video so you're gonna uh, set an integer that will store the position of the video so this will be this in integer right here we set up as a global variable so that's why we use this position for. So right here we're gonna go and say um, position it will equal to sp dot get int in this case because we're getting an int. We'll set these will be position as id and zero as default. Okay. So great, so that's what we call when we when we click and continue watching. But if a new video at all, we have to to actually save to save the current path. You know? For that we're gonna say sp dot edit dot put string put string as you can see and this will be saving the the path in order for later be used with the continue watching feature so we'll use continue watching so previously we we were fetching and now we are saving it so continue watching and we will pass intent info okay as you can see intent info and we will apply okay great now after these inside still inside the try block we're gonna say if intent info is null okay if the intent info is null we will basically go back to our activity we're that gonna say intent intent new oops 
Oops, 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 oops. So intent, we're going to import it. Intent new. Okay. New intent right here. Bit player that this. And we go and back to main activity dot class. Okay. And we go say, of course, start activity. Move past intent, as you can see. Okay. So we start the activity. And here we will um, set the video URI. Okay. So you're going to say, or maybe the video path in this case. So we're going to say, my video view dot set video path and this will be set to um intent info as you can see okay so right now we have to add the catch block so you can say catch exception e for example and inside the catch block we will if we have an error we'll say uh, log dot e for error and say we have an error error that will enable us to know what the error was it will be e that get message okay and we also have to will print the stack trace e dot print stack trace okay it's not really a must to do this but okay after the catch block we will request request focus okay for that we're gonna say my video view that request focus oops request focus as you can see okay and now we're gonna set the unprepared listener that will prepare the video view to play the video okay so we say my video oops my video view that set unprepared listener as you can see right here We'll pass new media player that unprepared listener. Okay, and inside the unprepared method, we're gonna say m player equals the past value, which is mp. Okay, mp. And if for some reason our bt view is null, or we have to check if the bt view is null or not. Okay. For that, we're gonna say um, right here after. So let me see. Is this is yeah. Is it still inside the unprepared method? So we're gonna say if my video my video view is different than null. We're gonna say my video view dot seek to position so we're restoring our setting for the first time the position okay if position is equal to zero we will start as a fresh video for that we can say my video view dot start Okay, else we will use the MP, the media player, to start the video. But before that, for safety reasons, we will check if MP is not null. So if MP is different than null. Okay, we'll say MP.start. Okay, so the first one is when the video is in the fresh state, and second one is when the video is just paused and we are just starting the position we were in previously and after we do this we want a full full screen mode you know so we will call a method that will enter the full screen mode for that we're gonna say we call the method hide system ui 
Of course, we don't have that method yet, but we will create it just now. Okay, outside the onCreate method, we'll say private void hive system UI. And inside this, we will create a view. This is basically the default way we go into full, full, full screen mode in all devices. So, decor view. We're gonna say get window, get window dot get deck review as you can see right here. And after that, we're gonna say deck review dot set system UI visibility. Okay, and we're gonna pass a couple of flags. So we're gonna say the first one being view system system UI flag full screen. Okay, then we're gonna enter, oops, what did I just did? Okay, and then we will enter an or right here. Let me see what's going on here. Okay, we don't need this here. We want to enter or view um, system UI flag height navigation. Also view that system UI, so system UI layout full screen. Okay, also we'll pass view that system, system UI flag um, immersive sticky, which will hide the bars automatically. Okay, okay, we can delete it again created this for error and um, we can also add so we have flag full screen we we can also hide navigation okay UI flag hide navigation and layout hide navigation so we go view that system you uh, the system UI flag hide okay 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 we are Okay, flag layout hide navigation. So flag layout hide navigation, as you can see. And I think this will be it for this method. We have five right here. Maybe we want to add one more, like layout stable, to make sure it shows okay. So we're gonna go and say after this one, um, view that system, system UI layout stable. Okay. Okay, layout stable, layout full screen. Okay. And we will leave that there. So we're calling hide system UI when we need it. So since this uh, class is kind of long and complex a bit, takes some time, we will continue to do it in the next video. So I see you in the next video. I hope you enjoy it. And don't forget to join the next video. Bye.